We've got 103 slides. This is a two-day course that I've managed to condense into an hour and a half. From the people that I've spoken to, there will be two types of people here. There will be people who will be listening and going, oh yeah. And there will be people who are feeling like you're drinking from a fire hose, which isn't fun. I feel like they're pretty head off. Uh, my point is, I've set this up in a way that you've been watching again and again and again. And we've got Matt over here recording this. So it's live stream to the Facebook private group. Uh, I'm also going to upload it on YouTube and I'll be sharing the slides on my group. So, uh, this joke is way too long, just give me a second. again and again, um, and use it as a guide to set up your first AdWords account. There's a lot of tricks and tips in here. Are we going at a reasonable pace? If you don't understand something, stop me, and I will explain it. Um, but I will also keep an eye on the time, because I know you've got other things to do, to sit here and just listen to me talk. Now, before I forget, two, two big things. Um, the next event will be landing page optimization. Then, yeah, conversion rate optimization and landing page design. It's been a month's time. I haven't told the guys which day it is yet, but I'll get that out for you soon. And I want to say a big thank you to Matt and Teo. We've been here at every single event so far. And they're here for signing people up, and Matt's our videographer. If it wasn't for you guys, like, this would be far less professional, and it would just be, you know, me shouting at Bunch of random people. So uh, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. I've got nothing else to do, so. <laughs> well, thank you, Zaya, Matt. No, no, no. All right, let's get started. Thank you all for coming. Um, I do this little skill every time. I'm trying to make it quicker and quicker for the people who have been here before. But the reason this event exists is I went to the Melbourne SEO meetup and I was just blown away. There was a huge amount of people. Uh, it was really good speakers, and there was a cool group of people that stuck around at the end and had a dinner and were sharing ideas about digital marketing. We're just really, really enjoying each other's company and enjoying sharing the day. And I thought, wow, I want that Adelaide. I'm not flying to Melbourne every month for this. You know, I, I want to make something like that on my own. So I made this group, and I just can't thank you enough for turning up. Because if it wasn't for you guys, I'd be standing here in a empty room, talking to myself, over a year, and no one here is complaining, so thanks for up. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, so we've got the King's Head. Uh, they let us put it on uh, every, uh, every month here. Generally, there's not a group of loud engineers in the background. This is simply normal. Um, but yeah, uh, have a beer, support your local pub. It's great that we can do this in this area. We're also sponsored by me. This is my baby. We're six weeks out. Uh, digital Labs is my little business. I do digital marketing. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, one of the key things about this group is this is about learning and sharing. It's not about selling or something. I found that really hard with adverts because there's so much in here. But I'm very proud of how I put this together that you can take away from this enough to set up your own account and you should be reasonably successful. I'm willing to help anybody. Um, always looking to grow my business. But the key thing here is that I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to give you some information. So that's what I'm doing. The, uh, the bottom line here for the rules is be kind to each other. There's people here that have absolutely no idea about AdWords and there are a couple people here that know quite a lot. So if there's something that doesn't quite sound right, um, I'll be or there's an opportunity to draw on somebody else in the crowd, I'll definitely do that. But let's keep this as a really open environment where everybody can sort of have their say and share. And there are no stupid questions. And really in life there are no stupid questions as long as you're you know, inquisitive and asking about what's going on. So, 
Yeah. Let's get started. AdWords, here we go. There will be an intermission in the middle where you can get up and jump around. Um, I wanted to put little workshop things into this, but I, then, then it would be like three hours and that's insane. No one wants to begin three hours. So, is AdWords right for you? There's a lot of good things about AdWords. I personally work on AdWords probably half of my day every day. Um, I currently manage... That's weird. <laughs> I currently manage uh, over $100,000 worth of AdWords a month, so I spend a fair bit of time in the interface. Previously, I worked at uh, Straight Outs of Living where I was looking after two and a half million a year, which is significantly more than what I'm looking after now, but I have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing and how it all works. In saying that, everybody does AdWords differently. Uh, hopefully, the people who have done this before can maybe think of something useful. Uh, but there, there are some things that would be considered to be the right way, but in general, this is always good interpretation, so thanks for coming on the right way. Is AdWords right for you? Well, it's short term, so you can get results really quickly, which I totally love. It's not like SEO where it takes months and months and months and months. You put tests in place and you can see how things happen. In saying that, it's really important to manage your expectations of yourself and whoever you're answering to about how long it takes to drive an outcome. It's not instant, it's a tank. In fact, I've got a client at the moment who wanted to double spend went from 40000 a month to 80000 a month. And I, we went on a journey together and they really honestly feel that they could just open a tap just double the leads and double the amount they spend, it's just not quite that simple. So it does take time to build a quality score, to get your click through rates up, to get this to work. So just bear that in mind. Um, there's a low barrier to entry, especially over the last couple of years. Lots and lots of people are getting in using AdWords. We've quite recently, I think it was the US, where digital marketing actually outstrips spend for TV for the first time ever. So we're now spending more on digital marketing than we are on TV, which means there's a lot more people to work with. So while there's a low barrier to entry and that's good for you, it also means that there's a higher level of competition. Which also means that there's no real control over what people need. That can be a real challenge. Uh, you can get in and find a really nice keyword that's costing you 50 cents a click. You're relying on a turn uncertain uh, return on ad spend with your advertising. And sometimes it's the market. And they're also they're willing to spend a dollar per click. And suddenly your clicks are going up and up and up and up. And that is the marketplace. You have to adapt and change these things. You, you can't just sit on your rolls, you can't expect to just keep going at the same pace. So it's definitely a risk of using AdWords. Uh, you get a quick feedback loop. Uh, it can be expensive, especially if you're doing it wrong, I think. There, there'll be people in this room who have experienced that, where, yep, we set it up, we get it going, and we've had no leads since we've been days, what's going on here. Um, if you're not doing this well, and you're not doing it right, you're not in your account regularly, it can cost you a lot of money. I have a funny story about this, actually. I took over an AdWords account for a fleet tracking company. Uh, all they did was want GPS trackers in fleet cars to see where they were going, Happening. And I was looking through their search terms and they'd spent over $10,000 on keywords related to GPS cat trackers. And I called the CEO and said, do you, do you sell cat trackers? No. We spent $10,000 on it. And that was a unique point in our relationship because he wasn't convinced that he needed to pay anybody to do his work and he, you know, he was doing it himself and he thought he was you know, quite okay with it. Look through your search term report and make sure you understand what keywords are coming in and which ones you need to make it out. It takes time to get it right and it's definitely not a magic bullet. So don't think that you can turn AdWords on tomorrow and it's going to solve all your problems. It just doesn't work that way. Like everything, it requires time, patience and effort. Goals and KPIs. So these are basically in every one of my presentations. For the people who have been to all presentations, you're just quite familiar with you, but go in with your eyes open and be clear about. Can everyone hear me okay? I, I'm like just having someone talking in the background, so I'm a little concerned that no one can hear me. But if you say you can hear me, I'll continue. Um, be sure that you know what you're looking for as a return on your ad spend. 
And that can mean different things for different people. Uh, it can be lead based, it can be sales based. It really can just be awareness. It can be moving into the market and want people to know who, what, who you are, what you do. Which means that you know, you're not looking for a conversion per se, you're looking for just traffic to your website. Um, but in general, it's a conversion of some sort, whether it be a lead or a sale. Set baselines. So right away, have an idea about how much it's costing you and how much you're going to spend on it. Uh, testing measure, always be testing. I think anyone who's been to my things would have heard that too. Um, there, are, there are countless times where I've found something really, really crucial, in fact, the none, and it's changed everything. If you're not testing, you're not doing a good enough job. And manage people's expectations. I covered that earlier, but really be clear about how much a lead is going to cost and how much a sale is going to cost and what that means for your business. So, what's an ugly ad? Um, I feel slightly silly about this, but I do know that people come to these that are just this is brand new for them. So, this is an AdWords ad, this is a, a text ad, a search ad. Um, it's just people treatment. It sits at the top here. Are you laughing at me? Yeah, yeah, I've had people a lot. Someone says they're laughing at me. Um, yeah, generally it sits at the top, sometimes at the bottom of the search results as well. Um, but we'll go over the structure later. This is also an AdWords app. This is a Google Shopping app. We're not covering that at all in this, in this um, lecture, purely because it will be like a two later if we cover that. Um, and finally, we have Google Display Network ads. So these are display ads. I don't have this mad obsession with SCMrush. I was refreshing and refreshing trying to get a different ad, and all I kept getting was SCMrush. So that's, that's what you guys are getting. Uh, but there are different types here. So this is at the top. This is the middle of content. This is actually the same ad as we saw earlier. So this is a text ad in remarketing. So if we look back here. It's very similar to this ad, um, just in remarketing, it's one of the tricks I use. We're not going to cover remarketing today, I really wanted to do it in this session, but when I did the test run with this and I went through for two hours, I went, uh, we've got to dump a couple of things out. So yeah, I'll look to do remarketing and, and uh, display advertising in a future session. The anatomy of an AdWords ad. So when you get right into it. These are called the extended text ads. They were very exciting a year and a half, two years ago when they first came out because it gave us the opportunity to really extend the amount of space that we can take up. So going from the top down, we have our headline one and our headline two. You can't really see that there's a different color blue here, but this is the headline one and this is the headline two. On the mobile, it will look slightly more. Um, this is followed by the display URL. Now, this doesn't have to be the exact URL for the, your landing pages. This will be set further on. We'll show you how this works. Um, then we have the description, uh, which is here. And this line here is actually an ad extension, as is everything at the bottom here. So the key part of an AdWords app is this section here. Again, I'll break this all down a few further, but I wanted to go through exactly what we're covering. Keywords. This is the basis of an AdWords account. Which keywords you choose dictates where your ads are shown. And this is one of the many arts of using AdWords. And there's a big difference between and a keyword and a search term, or a search query, they need to change the term, search query, search term. They're different things. So your keywords generate search terms or search queries. So as we can see here, skinny jeans can give you sevens, brand skinny jeans, skinny jeans juniors, skinny jeans sale, so on and so forth. It be a broad keyword. You're generating a lot of different variations from that one keyword. That's really important to understand. Um, when you look at your search term report, you can see a myriad of different things. And if there are keywords in there that don't make sense for your business, you need to get rid of them pretty quick because you're wasting your money. Uh, the, other, the other example here was women's skinny jeans. It still has women's skinny jeans, skinny jeans for women. 
and women's size two skinny jeans. So you can see there's a lot of variation there. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Basic setup. So I'm going to go step by step now through everything you need to do to set up your AdWords account. Um, probably not enough time for someone to follow along, but as I said, you can watch the replay, you can go over the slides, you can do it again. But here we go. This is what an empty AdWords account looks like. This is my empty AdWords account because uh, I don't have time myself. So I thought I would make a fictitious ad um, for hates. So uh, I should put up a group and have suggestions, which was great. That's what I wanted to do anyway. Um, but I thought I'd use an iconic company that people could understand and identify with uh, through this presentation. So setting up the first campaign, here we go, here's Hanks. So we're running this like we are driving people to look at the website and buy chocolate. We're not specifically looking for them to um, buy online. We're looking for people to get to the website and the conversion is more um, looking at the chocolate and then going in and buying it. They do have an online store, um, but for this product, you would want to split half search advertising and half um, Google Shopping advertising to get the best bang for your buck for this sort of thing. As I said, I just can't cover Google Shopping at the same time. So, campaign structure. Has anyone seen this before? Does this make sense to some people? Yeah, I'm seeing a few nods. So, we have the account. The account is the high level. In the account level, we add our billing, the email addresses attached to it, and where you are, Australia, basically. From there, we have campaigns. Now, campaigns can be split a number of different ways, and we'll cover that in a minute. The campaigns hold your daily budget, your location targeting, um, your distribution preference, what they're saying there is like location, geographic information, and things like that. Um, and then that's split further down into ad groups, which hold the keywords and the ads. So with your ad groups, you're tightly thinking what you want people to know about. And again, we're going to cover all of this later, but I just wanted to show you what the account structure looks like from top to bottom. See so people write it. You don't. I don't want to you lose your spot. Okay. Um, so, campaigns. How should you split your campaigns? This is always really interesting to me, and everybody does this differently. Generally, I look at product and service levels. So, I had a bit of a debate with myself today as I was putting this together. For Hakes, I was originally going to break it down quite granular. So, box chocolate, gifts, so on and so forth. Um, I decided that I wasn't going to work for this fictitious client because managing the spend on that would be a nightmare. So, I've gone up a level, and on their website they have. Let me go back actually. Here we go. They have chocolates, gifts, and then experiences. So that's how I would split the campaign structure for this particular client. Ooh, let me go back away now. All right. So I didn't do the whole. <laughs> Come on. I didn't do the whole build um, for time's sake, and because you know what's the point. Um, but if I was to build this whole thing out, the campaigns that I would be doing would be the three just before mentioned, as well as a brand campaign and a remarketing campaign. So yeah, as I was saying, you can split out by products and services, split out brand services, split out by remarketing. There are lots of other ways you can split out campaigns as well. A lot of people like to do things like find their best performing keyword and do a single um, keyword ad group, or SCAG. Um, or just move all their high performing keywords into one campaign because it's like the super campaign. I personally haven't found a lot of success with that, but I know other people that love that stuff. So everyone does it a little bit differently. This is the way I did it, this is the way I do it. This is the way people that I know that are quite good at this also do it. So let's move forward. So the type of campaign to pick. First thing you'll get met with is this lovely screen here. Once you click on the big blue button, you'll be met with five options. For the purposes of this presentation, we're going to do a search campaign only. Now, I'll run you through the 
use cases for the other types of campaigns, just for general knowledge, but we are just focusing on search. So search is, whenever you're on Google, you type in something, you search it, these ads come up, that's search. Display network, <coughs> so Google Display Network is a bunch of partner websites that you can advertise on. You don't get strong control over that, but there's a myriad of different websites that uh, Google Ads come on, and they can be used in those text ads, of all the picture ads I was showing you earlier. Uh, Google Shopping, I've mentioned that a couple of times, they're the little picture ads that come above the search terms. They're really, really good for econ. You've got video advertising, um, which is using uh, YouTube, and then your universal apps, which uh, drive people to install and use your app. So, next step. We've, we've selected search, we're going to go leads, and I said we're trying to generate people to come and check out the different chocolates and go and have a look. If we were going for an e-com, we'd be moving more to sales, and if we were just looking for brand awareness, we would be doing uh, website traffic. You put your website address in here and your phone number in straight away, and then you click next. So the first thing you need to decide is what location are you going to target? Now this seems really straightforward, right? It's your service area. Um, is not. Before we go there, I've got ahead of myself. Before we go to location, we need to name our campaign um, and decide whether we're going to do search network and display network. Always know on display network, it's a little Google trick. Google loves spending your money. That's why they exist. I think it's free, um, and especially not Google. So always click no because you will spend a lot of money and get very poor results off of the display network. It used to be set by default, so at least they've changed that, which is nice. Um, now, search partners. Include search partners network. I always turn this off by default. Now, there's another thing that you can really work on as you get more comfortable. Search partners are a group of, if I remember correctly, 200 websites that are very closely regulated by Google, which Google says will drive good results. Generally, if you're a beginner, I'll tell you to turn it off. If you're having trouble spending the amount of money that you have for a certain uh, campaign, this is a good thing to turn on because it widens the amount of people you can be in front of. And you know what? Sometimes they're just amazing. Sometimes they just work. But in general, you tend to spend more money than generate leads. So I tend to leave it off, and then in my monthly kind of optimization, I will assess whether it's useful or not for that particular client. So just to reiterate, campaign name, um, search network off, uh, at display and web node. Moving on now, we get to location. Now, as I said, this should be a straightforward thing. It's your geographic location. But there are a number of ways that you can do this. You can do this in radius targeting, you can do this in area targeting. So you see here I've typed in Adelaide, I can search Adelaide as a location, or I can go down here, it says advanced search, which doesn't have a yellow circle, unfortunately. Um, and go radius targeting. And this allows you to into a much wider area than if you were just to say Adelaide is a steel thing. So we'll just go over to location targeting. And I've got my uh, current suburb. Yes, I am very, very north. Um, but you can see you have a very strong, uh, strongly tight group location. My first tip, depending on the type of uh, marketing you're doing, negative and negative, negative in and out. Adding a negative to undesirable locations can sometimes really help you. Like if I was selling really high-end products, I might actually want to negative out where I live because the demographic is not of people who spend a lot of money, especially say on fancy cars, you don't tend to see a lot of BMWs in the Tristan. It's an opportunity to reduce the amount of people you ads are showing to who you know are going to either waste your money with clicks or drive down your um, click-through rate because they're not interested in your product. Another great tip with locations is if you've got the time to <coughs> add a bunch of them. So you can actually put in modifiers for locations that work better than others. And I've seen this work brilliantly. It does take some time, you know, importing a bunch of different postcodes but the benefits are huge because you might identify um, Woodville 
might be absolutely gangbusters for that particular product. And you can you can put a positive bid adjustment on it, say thirty percent. So every time someone in Woodville sees your ad, you're going to spend thirty percent more on it because you know they're more likely to convert a much higher quality customer. So take the time, add lots of locations. Language. This one should be really simple, right? English. I have had so many arguments about this with different adverbs people. In fact, there's probably someone here who is going to argue with me right now. But no! That's why you do it. There are, you can either go English or the language you speak. If it's not English, that's not your target market. Or all languages. And I've heard arguments for both. I personally go English. The argument I have there is that I feel the propensity of people to say that their primary language is not English, that is buying the product that I'm selling, is relatively low. But it really depends on the product. The argument against that, which I can totally see as a good argument, is that you are limiting your options when you don't do all languages. Just because someone doesn't put their primary language as English doesn't mean they can't read and understand your ads, doesn't mean that they're not buying your products. So it's a real personal choice, this one. It's think about customer, get in their head and think, you know, is it an multicultural customer? Is it someone? For me to save money, I'll put in English, but I have definitely um, looked at a campaign that wasn't spending as well as I wanted it to and moved it over to all languages. So, yeah, that's something that you have to make up your mind as you're on your own. Daily budget. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. Google recommends that you set your daily budget to um, 30.4 times your monthly budget. So now it's an average, some months have 28 days, some days have that, some months have 31. I generally just divide whatever my monthly budget is by 30 give myself that little bit extra to give it a bit of a push at the end of the month in case I need it. Um, but yeah, 30.4 is, is the recommended amount to be added. Now, delivery, you've got standard and accelerated. This is another hot tip. Always go with standard to start with. Don't go accelerated unless you want to burn through a lot of cash. If you've got an understanding campaign, I've had great results with flicking it over to Accelerator. The reason being, sta um, standard is Google will decide when to show your ads and they'll show them evenly over the day. Accelerated means that they will show your ads as fast as they possibly can. With, with standard, you de generally do get a lower cost per conversion because Google is in charge of when your ads are shown. But if you if you found a keyword in the search impression share is say less than 50% and you're trying to generate more people clicking on your keyword. What I mean by 50% is you're only getting half of the clicks you could get. Putting accelerated things that you can actually get in front of more people who are more likely to buy your product. It's like a really good thing to do if you're having trouble spending the budget and you want to push a, a, converting, um, a converting campaign to go hard. Bidding strategies. This is another hotly debated topic. So, what I've failed to mention so far is that this is the actual sequence you go through when you start your first account. So, I've just screenshotted each step as you go through. So, following this through, you can have it up in front of you and then follow through. Um, so, this is the next question you get, which is what big strategy you choose. I don't like Google Choose. Google wants to choose because Google wants my money. Doesn't mean that they they don't do the best job of it, they just they want to spend it. So select each strategy directly and go to manual CPC and then in use um, enhance CPC. What have we just done here? Let's go back a step. These are the different types of each strategies you can use. Target CPA is fantastic if you've got lots of money and high impression share. This means that Google will actually decide when how much you've been on each keyword, when to show your ad, ads, absolutely everything. Google's got it. And they and my reps keep telling me, the Google reps keep saying, this is the best way to do it. It's amazing. Uh, but it's not been my experience. There are times when you're spending a lot of money that using CPA bidding is really useful. And there's a really useful function in AdWords where you can do an experiment. Where you can split half your budget 
to the way we've been running it, and to put the other half of the CPAB to see if they really can get the return on investment that they promise that they can get. Um, but when you're starting out, you have really bad taste in your mouth if you just set up your account, your account put everything in the CPA bidding, and then expect that Google to make it work for you. That is not how it works. I reckon one day it will be. That's, that's Google's vision, is that anyone can get into AdWords, put their website in, and then just get conversions. That's the plan. I don't think they're anywhere near there yet. Yes, their machine learning is amazing, but it, it's not at the point that the claim it is. Um, and I've got plenty of evidence to back that up. So, the next one is return on ad spend. That is, this is how much I'm willing to spend for each conversion, or if you're on e comm this is how many dollars I want for every dollar I spend in advertising. Um, get mixed results with this one, it really depends on your own personal goals. Uh, Maximise clicks is that I just want as many people going to the website as possible. This can sometimes be useful when you're having trouble getting a campaign started. You would think that AdMoves would be really kind of straightforward and Set it up, click go, off you go. It's not the case. There are times when you need to generate a movement through the account. You just need clicks, you just need it to start working. If you're in the early phases of an account, you know, it's the first couple of weeks, the impressions are super low, you're not getting clicks, it's just not working for you. Maximize clicks really helps you out because it drives, it drives some data into the account, it shows Google that you're doing the right thing. Um, Maximise conversions, I've never seen that work personally, but the idea there is that they're going to, a very similar to CPA, only rather than setting the amount that you're willing to spend per lead, they, they're saying, we'll get you as many conversions as we possibly can. Um, target target um, search page location, so basically you can say where you want to be on the page, so you can be on the top of the first page. And this is great for clients who just want to see their name on top of everything. It spends like crazy, but it's great to keep a uh, client happy to go, it's up the top. And look, there could be a use case for it if you had a, you're a new brand, you're entering the market, you really wanted to push other people out, that would really work. Uh, we have target outranking share, look, I'm not going to lie to you, I have no idea what that one is. <laughs> I have no clue, I've never used it, it's relatively new. Excuse me, is this to choose a website and then you can... Uh... It could be. There you go. This guy knows. <laughs> um, and then we have enhanced CPC, which is um, similar to having a CPC with enhanced, but you are targeting a specific, a specific conversion. Wow. I'm going to get better at talking. Sorry, what CPC? Enhanced CPC. It's, um, it, it's basically giving the, the control over to Google. Like you still have a bit of control over the bits. Just kind of half in the middle, more of them. Generally, I'll use manual, I'll use CPA, I'll use maximize clicks. Those are my three. As I said at the beginning, everyone's different with this stuff. All right, so what we've just done is we've gone manual cost, cost per click and we've used enhance. What this means is that you will be in control of how much you want to bid for each keyword. Google will give you a little bit of help. So come in and nudge the bids up when they think that it's, it's good to do so, it's going to drive more conversions, and it will nudge the bids down when they feel that this keyword isn't doing very well. It's important to understand it's not an automatic, it's not a fully automatic system. You still have to be in, you still have to be monitoring your keywords, you still have to be identifying which ones are converting for you and, and bidding them up and bidding them down. We are going to ignore the rest of this because Google has a really weird way of wanting you to fill this information out. I don't like it, so I'm going to show you my way. Uh, so we're just going to hit save and continue from there. Yeah, so, and then we'll go yes, we want to leave. And we move on to the next section, which is keywords in more detail. Get ready, guys. That's a real talk about keywords. Woo! There we go. Perfect. I'm actually going to use this as a little intermission to tell a story. I was flat out today. Um, I'm going off for a long weekend with my wife um, tomorrow. So I have a lot to get done through the polishing of this presentation. I actually forgot to bring cuff links. And I, I, I put my, my suit on at uh, 
quarter to five, and I noticed that I had bed nothing. So I went, how am I going to do this? Am I going to run to the shop? What am I going to do? And this guy that I've never talked to in my co working space was just walking past. Like, he was a hey guy. Like, hey, hey. You know, I don't know. His name's Steve. No, now. And I just walked in my life. You never know any cufflinks, would you? You hear this funny look? He's like, I might do. I'm like, I've got this presentation tonight. I'm going to look like a real fool if I walk around with like flappy arms everywhere. It's like people, I know about bad words, but I can't trust myself. And he had cufflinks. Go no Steve, who was that? There's always something. It was pretty unfortunate that cufflinks was the thing that I forgot, but there you go. There's my random story. Hopefully that's uh, refreshed your heads of something that isn't keywords and words in the text, and we're going to keep moving. Branded keywords. I don't know how many times clients have said to me, and I actually held this belief for a short period of time, I don't want my brand keywords in my account. It's a waste of money. I'm already at the top for my brand of keywords. I don't need it. Whilst that makes logic and sense, it just doesn't work. So brand of keywords are keywords that hold your brand within them. So H chocolates would literally be H chocolates. Variations of all H chocolates. Um, dark H chocolates, white H chocolates, H, H chocolates in Adelaide. Um, things like that. They have the brand tag. These are really, really useful for your account. Google will never admit this, but I've read in plenty of places, uh, people who have worked at Google that say, your click-through rate for your entire account impacts each and every keyword. It's supposed to only be on the ad group level, but it impacts each and every keyword. Why the brand terms are important for that, brand terms have super high click-through rates, insanely high click-through rates. Um, and great quality scores. So actually lift your entire uh, account up. Again, there, there'll be people that will argue with me about this, but personally I've seen great success in it. Uh, they also convert really well. Now, they, there's an argument to say that that's because they would convert anyway. But there are people, like my auntie, that only click on the ads. I watched her once. I was like, what are you doing? She goes, I click on the ones. They're the ones that Google thinks are the best ones for me. So that's what I click on. And so it's shown there is still a huge percentage, I, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, 30% of all traffic through Google is still using the ad platform. So there is, there's still, uh, you know, it's still being used. I'm here today talking about it. Um, so yeah, you got high click-through rates, gives the whole account. So the other, the other reason that brand keywords are quite useful is if you've got someone else brand bidding on a keyword. It's a sneaky, it's a sneaky thing to do, and I'll be able to you that I have done it. But you can actually put all your competitor keywords in here on them and then put your ad up as long as you don't have as long as you're not misrepresenting yourself and saying that you are this brand, but you can bid on uh, lit page could bid on, on the keyword lit chocolate and have page chocolate best chocolate around come right above your organic search. That's a strategy that I know works. So yeah, if you're if you're bidding against it, you're, uh, you're you're stopping people from going. Oh, I'm actually it's going to cost me a fair bit of money to be in that position. So this is a little thing from Google that says generic keywords have high volume and low return investments. Brand plus generic. So we've got here Canon camera sits in the middle, and then fully branded keywords. Canon EOS 1200D gives you a very high um, return on investment for a low volume. How's everyone doing? I don't see too many blank stairs, so I'm obviously not going too quickly, which is good. And hey, we're not doing too bad for time. It's fantastic. Commercial intent. Commercial intent keywords are the most valuable keywords that you can have. Um, commercial intent keywords are things like buy. That's a very important one. Uh, the, the, uh, the Canon example was a great example of a commercial keyword. If someone's going to use your full product name, they're looking to buy that product. So this is a great opportunity there to get a conversion. So we've got examples here like buy insurance quotes, buy yard sales, subscribe. So subscribe, buy, purchase. All of these keywords are high, uh, commercial intent in them because someone is basically saying, 
I want that. And I want to pay money for it. So we have three types of search query. We have um, navigation, information, and transactional. What we, want to, what we really want to aim for in the beginning is getting as many of these targeted and more commercial intent keywords in your campaign early. Uh, and then you're working from right to left here. So then you want the information also. Signs of pregnancy, that's a good one. Um, Austin home prices, LCD TV reviews. These are like the next circle out. If you think of it as a target, these are the next circle out. It's things where people, they're probably going to convert eventually, so it's something to do with it. But there's no sign here that this is something that's going to convert right now. And then you've got navigation on it. Things like Facebook, Citibank login, White House website. Unless these are navigational to your website, stay away from them. You know, Facebook would be a terrible keyword for anyone other than Facebook. Because you're going to drive a lot of people <coughs> trying to get to Facebook. You would not believe the people and the things that people click on. Like, they have absolutely, like the cat tracker was a prime example. Fleet tracking cars! And someone's typed in cat tracker and gone, oh, maybe that, maybe that's going to get me a cat tracker. It says fleet tracking cars, which I understand. People are nuts. I don't know why they click on these things. It's because they don't care. It's not that many people. Just like, yeah, well, keep that in mind. People are crazy. You be real careful about the keywords you choose. You're just wasting a lot of money on people who are clicking. If you, <laughs> I just think that a couple times you want to add up how much money you've wasted on people clicking on things that have absolutely nothing to do with your company. And it's thousands of dollars. It's, it's nuts. So be very careful about the keywords you choose. Match types. There are many match types. Doesn't that look, isn't that scary? That's a, that's a lot of information there. I'm going to do my best to break this down for you. So, this is how Google knows how tightly themed around a specific keyword they can go when you type in a search query. So, I'm actually going to go from the bottom up here because I think it makes a little bit more sense. And I didn't make this graph, um, someone else did. So, an exact keyword, that's exactly what it means, exact. You have women's hats as an example. The only time that this keyword will ever generate a query or a click is if someone types in exactly the word women's hats with the, co with the comma and the S and everything. It has to be letter for letter exactly the same. These keywords tend to be more expensive, but they are so tightly targeted that they are incredibly useful. Next, we have phrase match keywords. This, as it sounds like, is a phrase. So you can see the example here is women's hats. It's got buy women's hats. This is still very tightly on the reins of what Google is allowed to show for your ads. It's, it's by no means an open startup. It has to have that phrase within the keyword string. Next, you have broad match modifier. This is my favorite. Broad match modifier means you must put a plus in front of each of your keywords, not something else you do here, yeah, is that they each have their own little symbol, except for broad. Um, and the plus is for broad, is for broad match modifier. This means that the modified terms must be contained somewhere in your search, but they can still be synonyms plus variants. This gives you, this gives Google not free names, you're still holding on to the names, but it gives you an angle. This is the way we want to go. Um, and this is the type that's used more and more. With Google's machine learning, I just bashed Google earlier, but their machine learning is actually fantastic um, in terms of this type of thing, which just doesn't give you the, the uh, cost per conversion. So this is my favorite type. And then we have broad. Broad is nuts and is only ever to be used in very sparing circumstances. When you are really struggling to find keywords or you're trying to identify new keywords. If you happen to have lots of money and you know you really just spend it, no one cares, broad keywords are great. What broad keywords do is it's anything that is at all similar. So we've got women's hats again, it's got buy ladies hats, you can see hats is the only word that's that's the same there. It can be even more convoluted than that. But what you get out of broad keywords is if you've got the money, you'll be able to see in your career report, in your search channel report, and everything that someone was likely to click on. You can see the click through rate, you can also see the converted. 
when I get uh, client accounts, generally people go on board. When I get a client account, and I've seen that they've run for a period of time on board, it's mean for me because I can identify really quickly which keywords for her. And they're the ones I'm going to do my campaign about. Yay! I look amazing. Yay! It's because you've done all the market research for me. Uh, those are the match jobs. Do you have any questions? This is confusing. Uh, and I'm about to tell you that I use almost none of these. So, I'm going to make some negative keywords. I'm going to move keywords at the moment. General account builds for me consist of a broad batch modified and exact and nothing else. Um, an exact generate a small amount of the traffic because they're quite tightly themed and towards your own most of them. Um, so when I back in the day, I used to put out an ad group for every single match type. Uh, these days, I'll just put out a broad match, match type and an exact. Depending on how much time I have, I'll only create a broad match. That's what I have. Negative keywords. These, as they sound, are removing from consideration a keyword. So we've got an example here of red shoes. Red shoes. So the negative keyword, the broad negative keyword is red shoes. So this is where it gets really a little confusing. The keyword red shoes is negative out. This means that it will still come up for the singular of the term, red shoe. It will still come up for red sandals for girls. It will still come up for this goes. Uh, negative keywords are really valuable for your account. It enables you to shape the types of uh, people and where they're coming and not coming. I'll give you a prime example of that. I have a property group uh, that's one of my clients. And they're just selling investment property information. So they're not selling houses, they're selling where to go and then educate you on what you need to do to buy your property investment. I noticed through the search, Report, search term report, that there was a number of uh, companies on there with the words property group. Um, Byron Property Group, Sentinel Property Group. Everyone who sells property is a property group. I just want to find out why. Like, is anyone in property? Can you tell me why everyone's property group? No, you're not my If anyone finds out, you can email me. I really want to know. But the crazy thing with negatives here was that all I did was put in the negative group into an account and the next day conversion was triple. Because they were spending all this money on people who were clicking on words that had to do with property group who just wanted to buy a house. They didn't want to invest at all. So it just went game us. That's the power of negative keywords. Looking through your search term report regularly and identifying which keywords are known to you is a great way to really maximize it's you got any questions about natives? Thank you. Uh, so you, you put the negative word red shoes and then red shoe will be displayed. Can you explain me why? It's a very good question. Um, that's why Google does it. I, I would put both in red shoe and red shoes. I can't give you an answer to that, that's, that's the way Google does the thing. Generally when I apply negative keywords, they're exact match keywords. So all the match types we just went through, they can be applied to everything. So the only time that I will use a broad is if it's really broad, because I have a feel I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose out. So most of the time I'll go through and really analytically exact match every keyword that I don't want in there. Because what we end up with is a list of keywords that we definitely don't want, rather than raw keywords which might be needing in out something that's driving conversions for you. And you don't 100 percent know. I mean, you've got feedback from the you've got feedback from AdWords which tells you which keywords generate a conversion. But that's assuming that that was the very last time they saw your turn. Most people will see your ad on Facebook, they'll, they'll go to your website, they'll click a couple of things, and the very last click of it. But that doesn't mean that that's the most valuable keyword you account. So you've got to be very careful about when you apply this negative keyword. So I generally just use exact match, except for uh, negative keyword lists. So if you go to Google and type in negative keyword list for AdWords, 
Uh, one of the first, one of the first searches that comes up is a really good list of like, 60 different negative keywords. They're keywords that you don't need. Uh, things like crossword, sex, porn, all of these, all of these words. Unless you're selling sex or porn, you don't need. Oh, he's looking. Um, you don't need those keywords here. So um, yeah, add those negative keyword lists in. Keyword research. I know I've been up here for a while. I'll try and move through quicker. Keyword research. We have uh, the AdWords keyword planner. I'm going to run you through that in a second. We've got SEM Rush. It's a brilliant tool. I really want to include how to do research with that, but it's just not possible with the time we have. These are my two favourites, though. These have yielded such amazing results. That is pen and paper. There is something magic about sitting down with a pen and paper and just writing every variation of what you would search. And lastly, it's ask people. And just get them to sit in front of you on a computer and search out there how they would find this product. You would not believe the weird things that people do. What's that? Mark uh, is a great example again. I'm like, how would you, how would you get to set the set product? What? Why? What? You have no idea how people do it. So you do your research. So get out there and find. Use your feet, use your Find out what people use to um, identify these keywords and you know, real world examples of how this stuff works. So AdWords keywords planner. You can find this. Um, you can find this in your interface at the top right hand corner. I've skipped that bit, unfortunately. Uh, I use the old version, I don't like the new version. If you want to learn the new version, uh, there are plenty of Google videos, but I'm going to show you to go straight down and get to the old version. And then we're going to be searching for keywords, uh, phrases, and website category straight up here. Now I've got box chocolates as my C keyword, and I'm going to change targeting from Australia to a specific location because you don't want to know. Now, you don't want to know uh, keyword suggestions for areas that you're not targeting. I'm surprised how different those areas can be. So, they'll give you a nice list here of different types of keywords of the average search and competition, which I wouldn't pay any attention to at all. Um, and I suggest a bit. What I generally do here is just download it. You see my little yellow button again. I'll download it into Excel. And then I will now make a giant list. And what we're looking for is themes, words that come over again and again and again, so that we can create ad groups off of those themes. So this is the most manual part of creating an AdWords account, is going through all the keywords that are generated by the planner, adding all the keywords you come up with in your own research, and anything else you can find keywords, and then looking for themes and creating your ad groups. Now ad groups should not have more than 25 keywords in them. 10 to 25, that's the golden rule from Google, uh, passed down by themselves. And yes, some people do work, try one single keyword ad group, so sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But with the way the algorithm is set up, 10 to 25 is the, six, is the sweet spot. So you've got your groups, you've got them in groups of 10 to 25, you split them out really tightly in the themes. And the reason that you've got them tightly in the themes is the ads for those keywords are directly related to the ad group. So you've got 25 keywords about box chocolate, you can then write an ad that's just about box chocolate, the different keywords that search out. It's really important. Because if I see an ad that's not, you know, I type in box chocolate and it's something about white chocolate or it's something that's vaguely similar, you know, ad text, it's, it's something to do with it, it's not the same. I'm far less likely to click on it than if it aligns perfectly with my search intent. That's what we're looking for here. Is I type in a keyword, I see an ad, I go, yes, that's what I want. I click on it, and I go through and I make a conversion. So, ad groups, tiny things, 10 to 25. Um, they hold the default bins and they also hold the ads and the ad extensions. I'm going to go through ads and ad extensions in a second. This is all of the visual information that will give a customer when they click on an ad. So, we go in here, we go down to Add Groups, we click on the blue plus, which is an existing key, uh, campaign called Chocolates, and we are going to create an ad group. It'll be a good way. Um, so, in here, all we're doing is adding the keywords and the default bid. Now, this is the bid 
that will be used if you don't put an individual bid for each keyword. You can find this in a keyword planner. Um, and it, it's a good idea to sort of put this a bit higher to begin with, see what comes through and pull it back down if you've got the budget. The same is true if you've got no money. If it's really low, the problem with putting it low is that you're not getting the traffic to know which keywords are which ones don't. You've got to kind of take a punt there. So you save and continue. Writing the first ad. So the next screen there is about writing the first ad. I'm going to move into that now. Ads. We've been through this earlier, but I'm going to refresh your memory. We have a headline. What are you offering? Use your keywords. This is the first thing someone sees. This should be tightly themed around the keyword that they've just typed in so they know they're in the right place. People will turn off in a second. Headline two on a desktop, it sits across the top. On a mobile, it trails down to the second line. What is the benefit? So if we had box chocolate, we would definitely have something about box chocolate in headline one, and headline two would be the best, the best chocolate in Adelaide, some sort of claim. After we talk about the benefit, we go on to key selling points, and don't forget a call to action. Uh, I've got an example on the next page, I'm going to stop trying to work it out and fly. <laughs> Uh, you put your landing page in, this is the actual page you want someone to land on. Make sure that it, it is, um, again, a really tight thing around the keyword. And then you've got your display URL. Now this is what actually comes up rather than your, so you can hide it and make it, again, more like the keywords you want. So here's an example. We have Hex Shoppers Adelaide. There's our headline. Uh, premium gift box of chocolates. I can't read it, it's hilarious. And then we have H chocolates as our URL here. And I decided that they should have sale because that makes this really, really easy. 50% uh, off your favorite H chocolates, factory outlet pricing available. I don't know if they do, but hey, I've never been out for long, so they have all that old stuff now. That's, that's my bag. That's the process you go for for writing your ads. You should have at least three ads per ad group. Um, and they should be a range of both brand and non brand. So this is a very brand focus. This is all about mates. You would also do a couple of variations that were just about chocolates and have nothing to do with hate. So, the process is you hit the button. I'm going to add. Um, oh, sorry, we've done that. We go through the process getting. Um, Getting extensions on is a similar thing. Uh, you move over to extensions, you click the button, and it comes up with a dialog box for you to fill out. Again, for time, I haven't shown you how to input each type of, of um, ad extension. We're going to go through what they are and how they work, and in the future, you'll be able to write them. So, site links. I can't stress how important ad extensions are. I don't know how many accounts that I see one or two ad extensions, there's no site links, no nothing, and they go, I don't know why I'm spending so much money. I come in, I put in a bunch of ad extensions, and suddenly their cost per lead is halved. How did you do that? You're amazing. Uh, I'm just using all of the tools that are available on AdWords. So the first one is a site link. This is linking to pages on the website that a customer would find useful. So we have uh, Michael Shoes here. So we've got Jordan's new releases. Uh, this is not a fantastic example because you don't work for Nike. Contact us page, really good. Services page, about us page. Um, anything else of value or not, someone might want to know about you. You've got like a cool uh, calculator. I've seen ones where they have like an interest calculator or something like that. That's really useful. It's just anything that can take up all of this room. When you see an ad that's got all of the extensions on, you you garnering more of that front page and the competitors. Always good. The next we have a call out extension. Yes? Sorry, we're just going back to that um, previous slide. Yep. How do you get the Google view by kind of star and other? Is that an ad extension? It is. It's the last one on this list. Good question. All right, call out extension. These are fantastic because this is just talking about the benefits of your product. It doesn't need to link to anything. It doesn't need to have any basis in reality. These are just words. Hurry limited, time, limited imagery, I doubt it. Uh, 
New Year, New Year's events every day, new events every day, apparel, home and more. It's a list of different things that you can um, you can add. Uh, so these are where your this is where again you can reinforce your benefits, your key selling points. You know, we've got a large range, we've got lots of different colours, we've got fifty percent off, all of that stuff goes in here. Uh, structured snippets, these are relatively new and fantastic. The problem with them is, is that they you you're very very um, you're stuck in what different categories you can use. So right here is types, there's only about ten different types of categories, and your your um, structured snippets must fit the type of these. So brand is another example of a structured snippet. Um, and this is again where you go through, this is more services, so this is where you run through the different services, products, offerings that you have. Try and keep you know, your extensions as different as they can be because they do appear at the same time in an ad. And you can see here we've got structured snippets, location extension, we've got um, call out extensions, and we've got the um, site name extensions all in one ad. So if you're repeating yourself too much, people are going to get very bored. Location extensions. Uh, this, these are a pain in the ass. So these are really, really hard to get a hold of. Um, Google has really funny, really funny, um, no, location extensions, we were talking about, you were talking about Star Wars. So these aren't found out, a lot of ones have all lost it. Location extensions, yeah, this is linked to your Google My Business. So you must have a Google My Business set up, and then this will link directly to it and give the location of your, of your physical business. Be careful with this, guys. You can't use PO boxes, you can only use a shared workspace if you're actually at that location in the hours that you say you're working. Um, definitely don't mess around with it because we've been start before. Alright, call extensions. Every single account should have a call extension if you're a leads based company. Anytime you don't have a call extension is if you're trying to generate sales. There's a huge opportunity lost. You know, we've got a high percentage of people on mobile and they if you're looking for a product and you're willing to kick the call, you're done. There's nothing left. There's nothing else in the funnel. It's just call go. Uh, they're really simple. Just my phone number. Review extensions. I got there. I got myself confused, but I got there. These are pain in the ass. Google have a list of different places that they'll take these from, and you've got to jump through a bunch of hoops. You've got to have a certain number of reviews from different places to make this work. I haven't seen great results with it working. Look, if you can get it, you get it. But it's got to the point now with it where most of the time I'm automated from Google and I just pull my hair out and I'm trying to get these goddamn things. So, you know, give you not know, a good way of, uh, of getting them. I mean, I have used NPSs in the past and from our school software to drive people to leave and use in different places. That is a way of doing it, but it's a huge, it's a huge investment. It's not an easy thing to do to get a new promoter score like get five stars, put it in place, drive people to get reviews. You've got lots of reviews everywhere, by all means, it's fantastic. If you don't, I wouldn't waste your time trying to get it. Yeah. Yeah, and I just, I don't care at all. I got on the phone to him and said, what is this? And I don't, don't, don't care. Really, if you've got a client like that that is driving a lot of reviews, I really would recommend a net promoter score software where as soon as they've finished their interaction with the business, you drive them to see if they've got a positive name or a neutral feeling about you, and if you have a positive, you send them an email with a link to, to Google, just to do nothing else, to try and drive those reviews up. Also, sorry, that that like my lead context so to get the stars on SEO, you need to have a structured snippet. So again, they have, they have rules around how many reviews you need to make that happen. And then you need special code on your page to make sure it works. It looks fantastic in organic search when you can get it, but it's, it gets as simple as they can. Yes, much better. Moving on. Scheduling. Hang in with me guys, we've got through the hardest bit of it, we're on the tail end now. Scheduling. This is important. This is an often missed part of uh, the AdWords experience. 
running your ads in midnight for certain products is ridiculous. Um, I have a software developer company, uh, client that never runs ads on the weekends, and they shouldn't. Not because of the software on the weekends. And if they do, you know, they, they cost a million bucks. Looking at looking at the types of behaviour your customers have, seeing when they're on, when they're not on, can save you thousands. So you go down to ad scheduling on the left hand side there. This is this is done at the campaign level. Now I add, this is a hot tip, I add 12 to 8, 8 to 6, and 6 to 12. I have in the past entered every hour. It was stupid. <laughs> there is a point of diminishing returns here. But having these three sections, you know, you can cut off the people that are between midnight and six in the morning. And a lot of there's a lot of businesses that don't do any trade between six as well as well. So you cut them off too. So once you hit that through, you hit save, and you actually start generating data. So the earlier you do this the better. You can click on these other tabs here that show you day and hour, day and hour split out. Maybe the day of the week, maybe the day of the hour. Um, but it's a really easy interface if you've already got it set in. You can just go, I want to pay 30% more on a Thursday afternoon. If you've got it set up from the word go, it's a really simple, and easy win. Alright, we're almost there. Landing page experience and quality score. Yeah, we all have time, it's fantastic. So, AdWords is an option. You are bidding against other people to have your ad shown at the top. This option is fair. So rather than it just be someone could come in and just put all the money down and beat you every time, this option is on your quality score. So it takes your quality score, it takes the amount you want to give, and gives you a rank. So you can see in this example here, the person in the first position actually is paying less than the person in the second position, and that's purely because they've got a garbage quality score. Google is not in the business to send its customers to shitty websites. It's not in the business to let you advertise whatever you want, and then you get rubbish. It would leave in droves, it's just not what they're in business to do. They're in the business to, uh, to match a person's search intent with a landing page experience. This is one of the key things you can do to make AdWords work for you. Have good landing pages. Make sure your keywords are tightly themed into ad groups. Make sure your ad copy is individual to those ad groups so that you can see, so that the person can come through, they can um, see the ad, they click on the ad, they go to the landing page, they have a good experience, they buy the product. And that's the interaction you're looking for. Take the time, build good ads, build good landing pages, and you will actually spend less on your AdWords. So, what's quality score? It's made up of ad relevance, expected click-through rate, and landing page experience. You actually see this in the interface of how they rate each thing. What does this mean? If your ad is aligned to your keyword, you get to it. Expected click-through rate. If you're running ads on keywords, about stuff that people don't care about for those keywords, less people are going to click on that. So for every impression, every time someone sees an ad, um, they divide that by how many clicks you get. I've seen click-through rates as low as 0.2% um, and as high as 30 percent And it really depends on the good quality ads, that's what you want to focus on. And landing page experience. Good, good quality landing pages. Landing page experience. It must match the search term or search intent, be easy to navigate, and should be custom. Do not send everyone to your homepage. Oh my god, I don't know how many accounts I pick up and then all sent to the homepage. This is not a good experience, especially if you sell a lot of different products. You want as many, as few clicks as you can to a conversion. Good, good landing pages. Here's an example. This is one I made myself, so I think it's great. Um, this is a, uh, an outdoor blinds ad. Uh, you can see that there is an outdoor blind in the background. I don't like their choice. I, I don't work there anymore. They've changed things since I've left. Um, but you should see clearly from the picture where that you're in the right place. There is a blind in the background. 30% uh, off free installation. You can see that it's Australian made, custom design, and has a large carbon fabric selection. It's really clear right here what you have to do. 
Fill it in. This is the other key thing that everybody fails. They go, that's ugly. Who cares? The idea here is someone clicks on an ad, they go to a landing page, they fill this in, they give you money. This is what works. I've run plenty of tests, time and time again. Put a lower on the page, put a clip so it opens up, all of these different things. There's a high percentage of people who know what they want, they've clicked on your ad, they've hit your landing page, put it front and center so they can fill it out and move on with their lives. Don't mind it, put it right there. Um, I'll go into great detail about this in our next session where I talk about the application design and conversion rate optimization, and it won't be an hour and a half, so please come. Um, but yeah, this is fascinating the different things you can do. I've also got a yellow button there, redeem your offer. Like, these are all very measured things to drive people to fill out this form. So yeah, billing, this is quick and easy. Top right hand corner, we have the little. Um, um, go to billing and payments, select your country, uh, say who you are, that's not my real address, so I thought I was a public page, okay, there, that's very good, that's, uh, that's a gym. Um, put, your, put your stuff in, say yes, and submit, and you are done. Your ads won't run without billing. Remarketing. I don't have any, I just don't have time to, to run through that, it's a whole other thing. We will get there, guys, but you know, I can already, I can see you looks in your face and say, like, oh my god, hurry up. I can't believe you're still talking about AdWords. I want a drink. We have further study recommendations. So I put this in order of, um, from beginner to advanced. And the bottom two can be switched, but these are things that have worked for me in the past. Linda.com. Linda has some great entry, entry videos to get you going, to give you an idea of how it works. Um, they give you a 30 day trial. If you're a library member, a state library member, you actually get a login for free. So you better go. And Google obviously has some training around this in their partner program where you can be certified in AdWords. Uh, there's a few hoops to jump in. There's some information to send you to a place where you can sign up to. To give you this revenue because you get to jump through a few groups here and there. And then there's this crazy good Udemy course. I warn you, it's like 40 hours. It took me six months in my car to get through it, but there is nothing that this guy doesn't cover in this ultimate course. Like, he pulls everything apart into great detail. If you're like me, you're a little bit nuts and you want to know exactly how everything works. It's like 13 bucks, it's a bargain for the amount of, the amount of money you pay for. Um, so the time that it's spent with you is it's crazy. Like, it's, it's, it's a long haul. Questions? No. Don't be sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got something for you. Data Studio. I can send anyone who wants it. I can. It's not mine. I'm going to go someone else and share it. Um, there's a brilliant AdWords report. One for leads, one for ecom. Um, in Data Studio, it's not one of the key examples, but I can send you the link to it. All you've got to do is a three-step process. Copy it to your account. Add their account. Change the name of the top to the name of the client, and you're done. Really simple, really easy. Yes, absolutely. So you want them in their own ad group, and generally I'll, I might even push them into their own campaign so they're not hurting everything else. Um, that, that's generally how I do that. You'd be surprised though, sometimes they get decent click-through rates and decent quality scores, but you know, the landing page experience is always shit. It's a fantastic question. Anyone else? I was wondering what the quality score, how would that assess by Google? How would they that score? No worries. So, look, they only give us an idea, right? It's not, they won't give you a hard and fast quality score. So, it, these are the three components. Damn it. <laughs> back and forth. Okay. These are three components of quality score. Your ad relevance. 
So how closely themed is your ad to your keyword? If you've got a keyword that's box chocolate and it was it was about fruit chops. It's bad ad relevance. Expect a click through rate. If you're running a campaign, if your if your account is running at a click through rate that's sub 2.5, you know, all over the place, they're not gonna they're not gonna believe that you have a good ad. Good click through rate means that your ads are doing well. People are talking well. And lastly, landing page experience. Uh, Google knows exactly what's going on here. So if people are going to a landing page and leaving again, um, then it's a bounce. If you look at a really, really high bounce rate, they know that. They don't want people having a bad experience. So, move on. Are you using Google Analytics? Absolutely. So I always need Google Analytics. Um, it just for the terms of a, a basics course, I didn't want to bother people with that. The other thing I didn't cover here is conversion tracking. You can definitely learn to do conversion tracking, and if there's interest, I'll roll that into another course. Um, but it is slightly more technical. And I, I, I just knew you guys would start throwing eggs at me if I started going into conversion tracking and you know, thank you pages and clicks to calls. And, yeah. But no, so yes, definitely using the analytics. It helps the quality score, you can go through and look at your bounce rate, look at your page, see how that's affecting things. I also use um, Search Console. So I make sure that Search Console is linked. For branded keywords, there's nothing better than Search Console because you can go through and see all the keywords that we generate for a, for a client. An example of that was um, a lawyer. Lawyer keywords are painfully expensive, 30, 40, 50 dollars a click. Um, and I went through their, I went through their search console report and saw that there was a lot of clicks for the individual lawyers at the firm, and that's been dynamite for me because it's still a brand the keyword, it's still about their firm. It generates great clicks at a really low cost and really low conversion. Anyone else? Yes. It's dependent on Google. So, um, it does not dictate whether you have them or not. It's, again, I don't want to get into this um, the main thing, I haven't talked to you about it. Extensions have their own click through rate and their own conversion rate. So, if, an extension, if you have poor extensions, they're not getting good clicks, they're not getting the conversions they want to be shown. Um, but the more you have, the more likely you have to be in there. And if you're reviewing them regularly, you're looking at the click through rate and the conversion rate, and topping off ones that don't work, adding ones that do. No else? That's awesome. The most pictures I've ever had. It's fantastic. Ah, uh, all right. We need to get back to where we were. I didn't give you guys an intermission. I'm sorry. I was just racing through. We might even talk about further study recommendations. Yeah, let's reiterate everything I've covered tonight. You can get in the Facebook group. I'll share on Meetup and we'll be adding it to YouTube as well. So, uh, look, I really understand that this is a huge topic and I've covered it very quickly. I really could do two days on this. Uh, but thank you for bearing with me. I do questions. If you have the time, stick around for a drink. We'll move away from the noisy, uh, the noisy you know, accounts. Engineers. Engineers, thank you. We're over the engineers. We regularly go to Chinatown for tea as well if anyone's interested. But apart from that, all I want to say is thank you. Thanks so much for coming. You guys are awesome.